it's going to also be a big uh, morale booster, and that's the biggest benefit of all time. I think it's actually awesome. It has a good variety in it, and I will actually don't have to necessarily bring my lunch every day, and I can kind of come to the PX and have a good time with, you know, coworkers and eat good food. I, I like it here. It's a big upgrade from the previous one. It's more open. Um, and they've got more places to eat, so it's a good upgrade. I just like that everything's more condensed, you know, you're not having to drive all over, over different places to get to uh, what you need done. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing what the PX is when it opens up, how nice it is. Reactions and scenes from the New Exchange Mall. While the main store isn't quite ready to open, the food and several of the other concessions opened last Thursday. Stay tuned to Meadweek for the latest developments at the Exchange. Hello, I'm Brian Spann. Also this week, another reminder, installation access changes begin November 22nd. November is Native American History Month, and have you taken the Commissary's $10 challenge? These stories and more this week on Meadweek. But first, we ran this story last week, but it bears repeating. Changes are in store at the installation gates. Saturday, November 22nd, the Reese Road gate will be closed for about four weeks for scheduled improvements. During this four-week period, Fort Meade's 24-hour, seven-day-a-week access control point will move down Route 175 to the Mapes Road gate. Additionally, the Llewellyn Avenue gate will be open Monday through Friday from 5.30 in the morning to 6 p.m. for visitors, businesses, and non-DOD ID card holders. While the Llewellyn gate is open, DOD ID card holders are being encouraged to use the installation's other access points at Mapes and 175, Mapes and 32, and Rockenbach Road. One final note, Llewellyn will be closed after 6 p.m. and on the weekends. All visitors should use the MAPES 175 gate. November is Native American Heritage Month. The Fort Meade Garrison Equal Employment Opportunity Office hosted this year's observance Thursday at McGill Training Center. This year's guest speaker, award-winning storyteller, Dovey Thomason. And so, he says, it's impossible to look ahead to the future. The future is always going to tap you on the shoulder from behind and it's going to surprise you. <coughs> But if you study the past well enough, that is a thing that can be clearly seen. And if you follow the lessons of the past, you'll anticipate some of those taps on the shoulder that are the future. In other news, the DOD's Healthy Base Initiative is a program aimed at better health through a preventive approach. A huge part of that approach is good nutrition. To that end, as part of the Healthy Base Initiative, several commissaries across the country are offering Cooking Matters tours. We teach four basic skills. Uh, buying fruits and vegetables on a budget, um, let's, uh, reading food labels, recognizing whole grains and comparing unit pricing. We start off, it's a 45 minute tour, 45 minute to an hour tour. We start off in the produce section. We talk about buying seasonal fruits and vegetables. Uh, we talk about convenience foods um, and then comparing the unit pricing. The Cooking Matters tours end with a $10 challenge. It's free $10 that I give you to put together a meal for a family of four for $10 or less. It can be a little difficult, but most people have done very, very well. Um, a lot of families have used it as uh, challenging themselves, so a husband and wife team or a mom and daughter team, and they will, um, you know, challenge each other. But yeah, they, they, like, they like doing it, so it's fun. Ms. Wilson added that the next Cooking Matters tour comes up November 18th, with the program scheduled to run through the spring of 2015. I have a couple of final holiday reminders to pass along. Once again, this weekend, November 15th and 16th, the Fort Meade Officer Spouses Club is hosting its annual holiday bazaar at the Fort Meade Pavilion. More than 70 vendors are scheduled to participate. Enjoy photos with Santa, holiday music, and much more. Finally, on this edition, the U.S. Army Field Band, headquartered right here at Fort Meade, is getting ready for its annual Sound of the Bells holiday concert series. It kicks off Wednesday, November 26th with the volunteers performing at Union Station in Washington at 3 and 5 o'clock. On Wednesday, December 3rd, the concert band and soldiers course, along with the volunteers, performs at Arundel High School. This performance usually takes place at Mead High, but scheduling forced a change of venue. Meanwhile, on Saturday, December 6th, the concert band, soldiers chorus, and volunteers take the stage at the Meyerhoff Symphony Hall in Baltimore. There's a repeat matinee performance the next day, once again at the Meyerhoff. The Jazz Ambassadors perform Monday, December 8th at James Monroe High School in Fredericksburg, Virginia. The Ambassadors are also playing at Hartford Technical High School in Bel Air, Maryland on December 12th at 7 p.m. The concert series concludes on Saturday, December 13th with a pair of performances by the Jazz Ambassadors at Centennial High School in Ellicott City. A reminder, the concerts are free, but you need a ticket. For concert and ticket information, go to www.armyfieldband.com. And that's Mead Week for this week. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Mead Public Affairs Office, have a great weekend and a great Mead Week.